Have you ever stopped to imagine what life would be like without the ability to remember? While it might sound appealing to erase embarrassing moments or painful memories, the reality would be far more chaotic. Picture trying to study for an exam without being able to retain any information. Every day would start with the daunting task of relearning everything from scratch. Memory is essential for our survival and adaptation. It allows us to recall past experiences and hopefully learn from them. But how exactly does memory work? Why do some memories last a lifetime while others vanish within seconds? Today, we'll dive into the fascinating world of memory to uncover the processes and factors that influence its formation and recall. So let's have a look into this. You are watching Lecture It. Memory can be broken down into three main stages. Our memory journey begins with encoding, where sights and sounds are transformed into a storable format. The sensory cortex receives raw data, and the hippocampus, a memory hub, connects it to existing knowledge, building context. This creates connections between neurons known as synapses, the building blocks of memory. Storage follows, where importance and emotion determine a memory's lifespan. Crucial memories undergo consolidation, a process where the hippocampus strengthens synapses formed during encoding. Memory building proteins act like glue, reinforcing these connections for long-term storage. Finally, retrieval allows us to access stored memories. The hippocampus acts as a bridge, reactivating the neuronal networks. Retrieval cues trigger these networks, bringing the memory back to mind. Memories are not passive recordings, but dynamic representations built through brain regions, neuronal connections, and biochemical processes. In one incident, a patient who underwent brain surgery to control severe seizures was unable to form new memories, although he retained many older ones. This condition, called anterograde amnesia, points to the hippocampus, which was removed during his surgery, as being crucial for forming new memories. Memories aren't created in isolation. After the hippocampus forms a temporary memory, it collaborates with the cortex for long-term storage. This consolidation process isn't a simple copy-paste, but a targeted interaction. The hippocampus serves as a temporary hub, providing the initial framework for a memory interacts with specific cortical regions like visual cortex for sights and auditory cortex for sounds to strengthen connections between relevant neurons. During this phase, the hippocampus replays the memory trace through neuronal firing patterns, strengthening the connections between relevant neurons in the cortex. This process, known as synaptic consolidation, involves protein deposits that boost signal transmission. The amygdala, an emotional hub, plays a key role. During emotional experiences, it releases neurotransmitters that enhance the hippocampus's encoding, essentially tagging the memory with emotion. This emotional tagging strengthens the memory and increases its chances of successful consolidation in the cortex. How do memories strengthen and mature over time? Initially, scientists were puzzled because the proteins necessary for memory formation have a very short half-life. How do memories stabilize if these proteins degrade so quickly? Studies have unveiled a sophisticated feedback loop mechanism that plays a crucial role in memory consolidation. This feedback loop involves memory-building proteins that, once produced, target the very genes responsible for their synthesis. These proteins interact with the DNA in the nucleus of neurons, reactivating these genes to initiate another round of protein production. This feedback process ensures a sustained supply of memory-building proteins, which is essential for the stabilization and maturation of memories. At the heart of this process is a protein called camp response element binding protein. CREB is a transcription factor that binds to specific regions of DNA, 
promoting the transcription of genes involved in synaptic plasticity and long-term potentiation. Long-term potentiation is a long-lasting enhancement in signal transmission between two neurons that results from their synchronous stimulation. It is widely considered one of the major cellular mechanisms that underlies learning and memory. When an experience or new information is encoded, Kreb is activated and binds to the DNA, initiating the production of various memory-associated proteins. Some of these proteins are then transported back into the nucleus of the neuron. Here they act as molecular messengers, signaling the Greb and other transcription factors to rebind to the DNA and restart the transcription process. This reactivation ensures a continuous production of the proteins required for memory consolidation. The proteins produced during these cycles accumulate at synapses, the junctions between neurons where communication occurs. These synaptic sites, often referred to as synaptic hotspots, are critical regions for synaptic plasticity. The continuous production and accumulation of these proteins lead to structural and functional changes at the synapse. For example, they promote the growth of new dendritic spines, which are small protrusions on neurons that receive synaptic inputs. The formation and strengthening of these spines are crucial for the long-term stability of synaptic connections. Additionally, other molecular players such as brain-derived neurotrophic factor and signaling pathways like the mammalian target of rapamycin or mTOR pathway are also involved. BDNF supports the survival and growth of neurons and synapses, further facilitating the consolidation of memories. The mTOR pathway, which regulates cell growth and protein synthesis, plays a critical role in controlling the translation of proteins necessary for long-term memory storage. This intricate feedback loop and the involvement of multiple signaling pathways highlight the complexity of memory consolidation. The repeated cycles of protein production and the resultant accumulation at synaptic hotspots essentially cement the memory in place, making it more durable and resistant to degradation over time. This ensures that important information is preserved and can be retrieved when needed, forming the foundation of our cognitive functions and personal identity. This complex process is essential for learning and memory, allowing us to retain important information and form the foundation of our cognitive abilities. Before memories are stored long-term, they undergo a process called consolidation. This involves stabilizing short-term memories. During this period, memories are fragile and can be disrupted by factors like drugs or stress. However, once consolidation is complete, memories become resilient. Retrieving a memory isn't as simple as replaying a recording. While it's often thought that the same neuronal circuits are used for both formation and recall, research shows that the brain takes a different path when retrieving a memory. This detour helps access stored information more effectively. Short-term memory and long-term memory also differ in their retrieval processes. Short-term memory relies on the sequential order of events, while long-term memory often depends on associations. For example, hearing a song from your past can evoke vivid memories tied to that music. Interestingly, retrieving a memory makes it temporarily fragile again allowing the brain to update and modify it with new information. Memory is a complex process involving multiple steps and brain regions, from the initial encoding to the delicate process of consolidation and the sophisticated mechanisms of retrieval, our ability to remember shapes who we are and how we navigate the world. So, next time you recall a cherished memory or struggle to remember where you left your keys, you'll appreciate the incredible process of memory.